this, Matt. Um, you know, talking. Do you think that uh, at some point, Matt, when um, they realised how over Becky was getting, purely by accident, by the way, wasn't it? This. Do you think that made WWE react very quickly? Uh, sort of react to the fans very quickly. They don't normally. They're not normally this good at it. WWE. That's what I'm thinking is so odd with this one they're normally terrible they normally don't listen but do you think that WWE have taken it upon themselves maybe by the time it got to Survivor Series they already knew they weren't get, that they're possibly not going with Charlotte anymore with Ronda and you know the Becky momentum by accident however it's happened has basically earned her now this match do you think they might have done that or do you think this was always you know going to be on the cards and we're just going to get a triple threat because mm. uh, anything can happen in that amount of time I'm, I'm not really a fan of the triple threat idea myself either I, I, I believe in what you just said and mm-hmm. like it's best to go one on one in those kind of meaningful matches where you're yeah. trying to trying to take all that momentum and mm-hmm. shift it onto someone else you can't really have a third wheel in that with all the ifs and maybes and you know if that person wasn't involved uh, so you know hopefully you know Becky's but it's so difficult now as well because on the other hand of this as well Oscar just beat Becky so yeah. do you think Becky's pride <laughs> would get in the way and think you know I want to reclaim that win as yeah. well yeah but you know story story driven wise it's telling you it's going to go with Ronda but you'd think you know you'd always think in the back of your mind I tapped out to Oscar mm, let's hope they don't go for a fatal four way in this one then <laughs> that would be, be a disaster <laughs> they win there. Your main event, Fatal, and a McMahon in every corner. Why not? Um, yeah, let's hope that's not the case. <laughs> no, a McMahon in every corner and a Ric Flair as well. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens there um, at this point. But, yeah, this match, uh, the Women's Royal Rumble, this was, uh, it was, it was a lengthy match, uh, obviously. Uh, an hour, 11 minutes, um, officially, the time Matt what do you um, what would you give this one Matt I mean it's very hard to score these ones but did you like this better than last year's or was this a little bit flat I know you was a big fan of last year's but what, what did you make of this one comparing uh, yeah I think like it's an upgrade it's an evolving process I feel like they've gone up the, a notch taken it up to the next level yeah. um, I'm excited to see where next year's will go even at this point you know this far off a whole year away I'm, I'm excited for that one uh, Royal Rumble is definitely one of my favourite kind of gimmick matches yeah. so uh, yeah I, I'll be looking forward to the next one I feel like it's definitely improving uh, one at a time and uh, this one pretty much hit everything on the head as it's supposed to um, almost to the fact where I feel like next year we'll have to go some to beat it yeah no I agree and uh, speaking of gimmick matches uh, we I thought they were doing away with all this um, this elimination chamber is it actually going to be called that or are they calling it something different now uh, I kept seeing adverts for the match but... yeah I assume that would be what it is because that's where the women's tag team champions are going to be crowned yeah. I thought they were doing away with the gimmick pay-per-views now I thought they were going to stop doing that but no we have to go through elimination chamber so of course they're going to make number one contenders in those matches I would imagine if nobody's got an opponent and you're a champion so uh, that's another way of getting there uh, always makes me angry because I just think the Royal Rumble it used to be that or nothing back in the day and that's why that match was so special it was the only one you were going to get to get to wrestlemania now of course if you win the royal rumble it doesn't even guarantee you the main event um you could be anywhere on the card especially if you're like aj styles and nakamura i mean you're not going to get the main event doesn't matter so um yeah it's just just you know i i um i might sound a bit old and grotty here but i'm an old royal rumble traditionalist and it always used to be they always used to say matt i remember howard finkel the main event of WrestleMania. That was what it was about. Um, but that's uh, that's long gone now, isn't it? Because uh, there's all these other ways. And of course, nowadays as well, if you've got a money in the bank briefcase, that's another way you can get in it and all. So, um, yeah. Um, okay, Matt, let's move on then. Because by this point, uh, literally, it had gone some already. And I was starting to flag at this point. Of course, being in the UK, I'm staying up all night watching this. So this is ridiculous hours. Um and of course, Matt, we get the new uh, sort of what was he calling himself? The Planet Man himself, the Planet Champion, is it? Daniel Bryan 
up against AJ Styles for the WWE Championship. Um, this 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 was absolutely fine, but I felt like the fans were really disinterested, Matt. And I, whilst this was going on, it got me thinking. Everything I kind of think I, I think is a great fantasy match, whether it was last year with Shinsuke and AJ, and I I think about AJ against I don't know like somebody like Samoa Joe, whatever. Every time it happens, Matt, I always feel like maybe I'm wrong because those matches they never really get the fans as involved as I, I kind of think they would on paper. I, I kind of visualize it very differently to how it comes out. Uh, this was a, this is one of those matches, man. It's a dream match, but um, I, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's because we just come out of a rumble match or, or what, but the fans, they just didn't seem as into this as I thought they would be. And uh, it's, it's a shame for AJ because actually it's the guys that he goes up against that are really sort of WWE uh, true that seems he seems to have the sort of matches that really do get people interested, which is odd. But it's just something I've noticed. That was all. Uh, when, whenever I think of these dream combinations uh, with people, it's never quite how I, it comes out. But uh, what did you make of the match, Matt, and the, the story in this? And of course, uh, Daniel Bryan ultimately, uh, you know, retaining the title. Uh, and say it's one of those matches that on paper looks great and you see it on the on the Royal Rumble card you like, think this wow, is the wow, stealer don't you but in, yeah the placement was kind of strange I mean two back to back kind of heavyweight title matches it's a bit confusing to mm-hmm. me um, and they have it like I said just after a Royal, a Royal Rumble which is a, always a difficult spot you know because the fans have been so excited just beforehand and even watching it at home, like I was, I was kind of watching it and then thinking, man, you know, I'm, there always comes a point in a five-hour pay-per-view where you just kind of lose a little bit of focus, mm-hmm. and it was definitely during this match. I mean, I came home after I had seen it, and then I thought about it a little bit, and I was like, man, I, I've forgotten parts of this match. You know, it just all blurred into one. It was quite long as well, I think. From what I yeah. Before. It just felt really long, one of the two. But um, it was drawn out, and I don't feel like there was a many spots that really captured my imagination as I thought there might have been. I thought these two guys would just have it like in strength chemistry and gel really well and you know maybe it's just the whole thing of the real AJ Styles you know he doesn't really seem that much different from the, uh, the old AJ Styles from what I saw in that ring and nor does the new Daniel Bryan he seems to have the same move set as well it's just like mm, okay well it says something different but actually plays out exactly the same way uh, and you know, sometimes when you go through all of that and then you get to the ending and you still just don't know what's going on. Why has this person turned out? Like, turned up? Where is his partner? Like, is this the beard group now? Are we going to call this beard bros or something? Just, he just, looked like a tree hugger. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against tree huggers, by the way, that that might be listening to the podcast. But, I mean, yeah, it was very strange. I've I got my notes here, 22 minutes into the match, and Eric Rowan enters, <laughs> where it looks like a lumberjack. I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, it was very odd, and, you know, no real explanation, of course. Uh, choke slammed um, star, you know, Stars, and then, you know, Brian pins Stars, and, yeah, they, they just sort of walk off happily ever after. Um, and, and that was the end of that, a match that went, you know, just over twenty four minutes, but yeah, they weren't. Yeah, like you say, man, it just the 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 crowd really looked sort of you know dead and buried um, after this a little bit. It just didn't have what I thought it was going to have, which was which was a shame, you know. Both of these talents, you think this is the the match that's going to steal the night, but uh, like you say, it's not always like that. What do you um, do? You think now that Luke Harper is. The, don't tell me he's also going to be in this as well. Um, is is that a way they could go now, Matt, and have three of them? Oh, it is bizarre because I always looked at their tag team and thought Harper was the star, but now we hear Rowan is in the spotlight. And, you know, if anything, I thought Rowan might be done with the company. I thought that might be it for him, but he's given a whole new lease of life. They obviously, you know, Vince McMahon perhaps sees something in this guy that a lot of other people don't. 
uh, and he really likes something about him because he does get given a lot of second, third, fourth chances to prove himself in the company that he can actually uh, generate a buzz around himself. But it always seems to fall stale somehow. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to hold my breath on this one. I feel like this would be another thing that just fizzles out in time. Yeah, I've got visions of a three-on-three match and uh, them hooking the uh, the club up again. Um, you know, with uh, what's his name, Gallows and Anderson, with AJ up against the three of them, uh, sort of in between. Um, I hope that's not the case, but uh, you never know with these things. It'd be nice. I know that Luke Harper, he um, he's been down. He's been at the performance center. There's been loads of pictures of him. But uh, I don't know if they're going to repackage him. and I mean, I, I wish they kind of would repackage him because I think when you see him come out with the vest top, and the, it just looks too wyatt for me. Um, I kind of, anyone that, you know, if I was going to look, if I look at Luke Harper, I just think, man, that guy, he looks like freaking Bruiser Brody. Um, if he just wore like, kind of like JBL wore with the black, with the black uh, trunks and just pads and, you know, just send him out. I think he'd be pretty. I be, I think he'd be pretty cool, and just have him as a hard hitting guy. Um, but yeah, whenever I see him in that stuff, I'm just like, Ugh, it's just, just very sort of wiry again. And you're waiting for him just to team up again with, with uh, Rowan. So um, maybe they'll repackage him. I don't know. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll just bring him back. And here we go again. Uh, this time with Daniel Bryan. Who who knows? Uh, what do you give this match uh, as far as ratings, Matt, for this one out of five? Very difficult for me to judge. I mean, I feel like I really shouldn't be that harsh on it, but and the ending just kind of sucked. So I'm gonna give it two and a half. Yeah, I'll give this a three, slightly more, only because uh, the crowd was dead, obviously. But um, it, it uh, for me, you know, watching it silent, you, this is a, still a, a good match. But uh, terrible timing. This is actually where they could have had the cruiserweights. This would have been a perfect position to have the cruiserweight match straight after the Rumble to get everybody, um, you know, everyone chilled and relaxed. So you just watch some fast-paced action. But when you need to watch people tell a story again for 25 minutes, it's difficult. But if you had, like, cruiserweights going out there a little bit faster... 12 minutes worth that that would have been enough that would have been enough break but uh yeah we got what we got um okay matt uh let's go now to the other uh title match of course this time the universal championship uh we have finn balor challenging brock lesnar and the the whole theme is david versus goliath for some reason i don't understand how he's become he has to be David I mean surely Matt um he's I mean he's small but I mean he's but uh, he's got to be a slightly taller than Daniel Bryan right or am I wrong oh yeah I mean yeah what is going on here much of a stretch is it from the last kind of there's the match that we saw yeah um I, what, what I would say about this fact is that I'm always continually surprised by Brock and his versatility and mm-hmm. um, can work a variety of matches it's mm-hmm. not just a one trick kind of pony he, he's got like a lot of things in his bag of tricks and he can sell very well um, he did that in this match particularly uh, he must really see something in Finn Balor to actually go yeah that's the guy I want to fight and I'm actually going to give back to him in this match I'm not going to sandbag around them. I'm actually going to actually sell and actually make it look like this smaller guy has, uh, has a real chance of physically hurting me and actually uh, put him my title in jeopardy. So yeah, I think Brock came out and did a very good job of that. I mean, the only downside to that was a slight bit of inconsistency where he can't even German suplex Finn because he's in so much pain. But then after the match, he decides to demolish him with German suplexes. <laughs> no yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was very consistent. Um, I mean, this match. I mean, it seemed like it went on miles longer, but it was only actually under nine minutes. But um, I was watching this. I, again, I don't know what it is, but a Brock Lesnar match is just feels different every time. You never know what you're gonna get. And um, we said on the preview, Matt, if he really digs you as a performer, if he really has respect for you, as we know he did with Finn Balor. Apparently, hand picked Finn Balor, um, and it it's gonna make the match even better when he's into it. He clearly was into Finn Balor because you know the amount of selling he was doing. 
Um, and it was good. Finn Balor, um, probably more so than Daniel Bryan, got so much crazy attacking, like offensively, just over and over again. And it made logical sense. That's what you would do. That's what you'd need to do. 